discuss about progressive tumors and tumor like patients. So before starting, few general points you should remember whenever we are discussing tumors of any organ, the tumors are divided into in benign, what will come? The circumscribed encapsulation. No, no, no. What are the tumors? Yeah, fibromas, omas. Or omas, usually they are benign tumors. Okay? And in this section only there are some tumors which are not tumors, but they are tumor-like tumors. For example, if you take a cyst, cyst is not a tumor. But to the naked eye, it will appear, to gross, grossly it will appear as a tumor. So if any structure which is appearing as a tumor, but it is not a tumor, it is called tumor-like lesion. Is it clear? So in ovary also, first we will discuss about what are the tumor-like lesions, and then we will discuss about the ovarian carcinoma, ovarian tumors. Okay? So the tumor-like lesions are the non-neoplastic cyst. What is cyst? Any sac which is filled with fluid. Okay? It is called cyst. A cyst is filled with a clear fluid or it can be a mucinous fluid depending on the secretion. Any sac, anything, if it is filled with fluid, it is a cyst. Cyst can be a clear serous fluid or it can be a mucinous, that is, the secretion is mucin. Now in ovary, because the normal structure of ovary is finished, you know what is, how normal ovary is. Okay? What are the things you will see in ovary? Follicle, very good. Follicle? Follicle is there, after that the follicle it develops and it forms a yeah, graphium follicle. After that, there will be rupture of that. After rupture, there will be? Yeah, very good. Purpose cute. So, a cyst can form in that follicle, in that graphene follicle. If before the rupture it forms, it is follicle cyst. After the rupture it forms, what it will be? Luteal. Luteal cyst. So, the first cyst will be follicle on luteal cyst. Very simple. You just know. So these are the few points you should remember for follicle cysts. The origin of normal physiology originate from unruptured graphene follicle or from follicles that are ruptured and become immediately same. These are often multiple. Why it is multiple? Why not single? Yeah. No cyst. Why cysts are multiple? Because the follicles are multiple, there is no one follicle. So multiple follicles means everything. You know each combination, how many follicles will be there? Yeah. So it can be like that, multiple. If you see, one will rupture. Follicle system. Each ovulation it will be one. So this one, one follicle cyst will form. Next one, one more can form. After that, one more can form. And mostly it is normal. Yeah, yeah. The, the patient will not complain of anything. Unless it is very big enough to compress the adjacent structures. Okay? If you see any follicle cyst in, I think in museum it is there or not, I don't know. You will see an ovary with multiple cysts. It will be full of cysts. Okay? So that what does this denotes? This denotes that the patient is unaware of the cyst. Okay? So these are diagnosed when she went to the doctor for, and she did routine ultrasound for some other problem. At that time she will discover all these things. Okay? there is one cyst, the last sentence. So occasionally they become sufficiently large to produce palpable masses and pelvic pain. This sometimes the cyst rupture producing intraperitoneal bleeding and peritoneal symptoms, acute abdomen. What are the symptoms of acute abdomen? What do you mean by acute abdomen? Acute 
the secondary sexual features, all the secondary sexual features in females is due to which hormone? Estrogen. Okay? If estrogen is not there, what will happen? Yeah. So the features of androgenism, the male features will come in female. Hirsutism and all these things. Okay. One more thing, because there are multiple cases, there is a problem with fertility. Why there is problem with fertility? The patient will have an ovulatory cycles. An ovulatory cycles means there is no ovulation. Once there is no ovulation means no ovum. This is one part. No ovum means that there will be problem regarding the hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Okay? Because of this problem, the patient will have these features. Okay? What features? Hyperandrogenism, menstrual abnormalities, polycystic ovaries, and ovulation and decreased fertility. Okay? Stromal hyperthecosis. What do you mean by hyperthecosis? Hyperthecosis. What is the structure of ovary? Yeah. After that inside? After that inside, what will happen? Stroma? Histology. Histology of ovary. Yes. Then clinical albuginia. Okay. Then stroma. The cortex, including stroma and follicles. Okay. Yeah. Then we develop. Yeah. So stromal hyperthecosis is hypercellular ovarian stroma. So whenever the ovarian stroma is hypercellular, there will be excess of androgens. Okay. There will be excess of androgen. See, the ovaries, just like males, they have androgen, the females are also having androgens. But what will happen to those androgens? They are suppressed by these other hormones. So whenever there is no suppression, the androgen level is increasing, what will happen? It will create its features of hirsutism and virilization. So the patient will have features of hirsutism and virilization. It is also associated with PCOS, polycystic ovaries. Just now we have discussed polycystic ovaries. And the treatment is, you have to just remove the ovaries. Otherwise, these main features will come in that patient. Because there is no suppression. Yeah, yeah. Second thing is, but there is stroma hyperplasia. This stroma hyperplasia itself, it will increase the androgen level. No, no, no. The thing is, the estrogen and cholesterol, whenever it is increasing, it will suppress this androgen level. Okay? When this is not there, what will happen? Increase. Yeah, the androgen level will rise. Is it clear? The ovary, the ovary, the ovary, the ovary. Uh, the, what is the cause of it? There is no cause. Still it is not understood. Etiology is unknown. Okay? Last is the chocolate cyst. This cyst is a blood containing cyst resulting from ovarian endometriosis. What is endometriosis? This is the last chocolate cyst. Yeah. What is endometriosis? Yeah. Yeah. Endo yeah. Presence of endometrium outside, uh, presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. So if it is in the ovary, it is called ovarian endometriosis. So it appears as a blood, blood containing cyst, so that's why it is called chocolate cyst. The ovary is the most frequent site of endometriosis. Chocolate cyst, it is very common, the ovary, if you just cut the ovary, it will appear as a brownish color. Now or over it will be grey body. Yeah, grey pinkish. But chocolate cyst, the ovary will be brownish. Or chocolate color, you know chocolate, dark brown. So that is due to endometrium. Endometriosis, what does it mean? Endometriosis means presence of endometrium outside the uterus. If it is ovary, it is
is not ovarian endometriosis. If it is sometimes the endometrial tissue, it will be an abdomen. That will go, that it is called abdominal endometriosis. It is very common endometriosis. Many females they get very prolonged treatment for this. Two terms you should remember this pathologically related to endometrium. One is endometriosis, second is adenomyosis. Okay? Endometriosis is presence of endometrium outside the uterus. Okay? And adenomyosis is presence of endometrium in the myometrium. Endometrium, endometrium, myometrium, three layers. So, if this endometrium is in the myometrium, it is called adenomyosis. If the endometrium is outside the uterus, it is called endometriosis. If it is in the ovary, it is called ovarian endometriosis. If it is enlarges, it forms a cyst, and that cyst is called chocolate cyst.
yeah, though it is looking very lengthy, but it is very simple. Yes. See, because of the ovulation and scarring, you will have cyst. If that cyst enlarges, it will become a cyst adenoma. It is means lined by simple columnar epithelium. Once the lining epithelium it becomes malignant, what will happen? There will be proliferation of that lining epithelium with features of malignant cell. Is it clear? Once the features of malignant cell occurs in that, it becomes cyst adenocarcinoma. Okay? Yes? This is ovary. All we are discussing is ovary. But the cells are similar. Similar to fallopian tube epithelium, it is called. It is not the fallopian tube which is coming here, it is similar to fallopian tube. Okay? Okay. Remember this, this is very simple. To you, it is looking very complicated, but each one is a cyst. Okay? These are cysts. <laughs> and I told you to say it is adenocarcinoma, these epithelial cells they should proliferate. Once they start proliferating, they will not go outside. First, it will fill the cyst. How it will fill? Once they start proliferating, they will come enter the cyst with alike projections. So, there will be multiple projections inside the cyst. Once the whole thing is filled, then only it will come out. So these are nothing but the cyst lining with all projections, projection of epithelial cells. Once you see the projections of all these epithelial cells, then it is called cyst adenocarcinoma. If there are no projections, only simple lining, simple columnar lining is there, it is called cyst adenoma. Okay? So cyst adenoma. They are of two types. One is serous, second is mucinous. If the secretion is clear fluid, it is called serous. If the secretion is mucin, it is called mucinous. Is it clear? So this is the mucinous cyst adenoma. Again, these are of three types. Benign, borderline and malignant. The benign tumor is characterized by multilocular cysts and by mucus secreting columnar epithelium. The same like the serous, the epithelium will be columnar epithelium. The only difference is there the secretion is clear fluid, here the secretion is mucin. Okay, there is one sentence here, papillary projection and samoma bodies. Do you hear this term, Samoma bodies? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they also do. The Samoma bodies is the calcium deposit. Okay, it is that. Otherwise, it is called calcospherules. The laminated calcium deposit, if it is there, it is called Samoma bodies. This comes in many tumors. And one of these tumors is cyst adenocarcinoma. You will see this in thyroid carcinoma also. See this, here it is very clear. Mucinous is adenocarcinoma. You can see this. This whole one is the cyst, and because of the proliferation of the epithelium, the epithelium is projecting inside, and you can see all the lining epithelium. And this is columnar. You can see the basal nucleus, and here it is filled with mucin. Okay? And one more term here, it is called pseudomyxoma peritonite. What is pseudomyxoma peritonite? See, there is mucin inside this. Okay, mucinous cyst adenoma. Once this mucin ruptures, it enters the peritoneal cavity. In the peritoneal cavity, this mucin it will appear as a ball. So, to surgeon, it looks like a tumor. Okay, but it is not a tumor. It is just a ball of mucin. That's why it is called pseudomyxoma. Pseudomyxoma peritonite. Endometrioid adenocarcinoma. Why? What do you mean by endometrioid? It is 
endometrium like any tumor if it is like endometrioid trioid it is there then that means it is endometrium like so endometrium like so it resembles endometrium so it resembles endometrium but the tumor is inside the ovary or we are discussing ovarian tumors the tumor of the ovary ovary which is looking like an endometrium it is called endometrioid tumor clear cell carcinomas they are most common ovarian tumors seen in association with endometriosis so these are all clear cell just remember two points brenner tumor this is brenner tumor did you see any histology of urinary bladder no it is not there if you see urinary bladder then if you see this it will just look like a urinary bladder so brenner tumor is the collection of transition epithelium this one is transitional epithelium and surrounded by can you see here surrounded by fibrous tissue can you see brenner tumor just remember the microscopy transitional nest of transitional cells transitional epithelium surrounded by fibrous tissue and the nuclei of this transitional epithelium is coffee bean shape remember this can you remember all these things <laughs> if it is difficult then just remember the names because the if question is asked then you have to write brenner tumor coffee bean nuclear and transitional epithelium if you remember these two points it is more than enough coffee coffee bean coffee seeds coffee seed appearance so in this only two points are important transitional epithelium coffee seed appear of the nuclear next germ cells germ cells in this category you will see three types of cell this germinoma endodermal sinus tumor and teratomas in this the teratomas are the most common and teratomas they arise from three embryonic layers one of the embryonic layers endoderm mesoderm and ecto ecto and no meso they are the three layers and all the body human body it develops from these three layers okay so any tumor arising from all these three layers embryologically it will contain the elements of all, all this okay and this is called teratoma see this these tumors are characteristically demonstrate elements from two or three embryonic layers okay is it clear what is teratoma teratoma any tumor arising from embryonic layers two or three embryonic layers okay so it is divided into three mature immature and monodermal immature means you can't differentiate after seeing teratoma from where it is arising immature yeah which layer mature means if you see any hair or any teeth inside the teratoma then you will tell you can say from which layer it is arising so that is called mature teratoma is it clear only these two points is enough okay immature means you can't differentiate and mature means you can differentiate is it clear only one word is important there is a term called looks at tumor and how to diagnose this looks at tumor is by schiller duval body and this is the schiller duval body if it comes in osky i think you can write this this is a looks at tumor and the arrow is pointing towards schiller duval body no need to go into details because at your level all this is not required okay sex spot stroma the tumors arising from this stroma these are divided into fibroma thicoma granulomas and tumor and just remember few points fibroma you know it is a tumor of fibroblast and it is associated with meigs syndrome 
What is mixed syndrome? Ovarian fibroma, ascites, and hydrothorax. Yeah, it is too lengthy. The, uh, the problem is the same lecture is being given in, uh, in girl side also. So if they put questions, then I can't do anything. <laughs> so you have to know. And granulosa cell tumor, remember only this one. Car axillary bodies, small follicles filled with histophilic secretion. Only these two, three points are important. Remember this. Okay? Fibroma is associated with Meek syndrome. Granulosa cell tumor, it is a estrogen secreting tumor. And to diagnose it, you need car to you need to see car extra bodies. These are yes. Fibroma is fibroma is no, but don't worry. Question will be put. Okay, it's okay. Fibroma it is the tumor that demonstrates liquid contents in addition to fibroblasts. This is the car external bodies you can see. Granulosa cell tumor, car external bodies are formed by tumor cells arranged in circular. You can see this circular pattern. Circular pattern of tumor cell is the car external body. Yeah. And circulating cell tumor, you should remember they are ring crystals. Last is the metastasis. What are Krugenberg tumors? Krugenberg. See, any tumor, Krugenberg, I think you have discussed this. Yes. Krugenberg, what do you mean by Krugenberg? You know what are malignancies of the GIT, stomach or intestine, colorectal carcinoma, they will metastasize and the metastatic cells they deposit in the ovary and form tumors. So it looks like an ovarian tumor, but these are not ovarian tumors. These are the secondaries in the ovary. So it is called Ukanberg tumor. Yeah. Secondary? Yeah, secondary. Secondary is from GIT. You can see this. Gastrointestinal tract, breast, or endometrial origin. So when it comes from the, yeah, even breast tumors also, it will metastasize to ovary. So once it comes from the GIT, colorectal carcinoma, those the cells will be columnar mucin producing. So here also it will be mucin producing columnar cells. They are also called signet ring cells. What are signet ring cells? A, tube, a cell which has mucin, it will displace the nucleus. Take a ring, yeah. if you see the ring, what it will have? It will be a round structure with a small pearl. You saw a little ring? Yes, yes. So it is signet ring appearance of this cells. Mucin displacing the nucleus towards the periphery. So the cells will be signet ring cells. Even the projector is not allowed. <laughs> okay, that, that is the last slide. That is called Krugenberg tumor. See, this lecture is difficult, but you should remember the names, at least the names. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.